All right, folks, so now let's go ahead and take a look at plotting in Moo. And uh, we might have done this in both of the classes where I was teaching in class, but here's a, a nice review for you, just in case you want to go over this again, or if you missed something or were struggling getting your CPX to work. Um, actually, let's hop over and I'll, I'll show you some of the slides here. So um, Moo has a, a plotter that's built in, and it can plot anything that's a tuple. Now, a tuple are numbers inside of parentheses here. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to go ahead and we are going to um, uh, get it to show us the um, uh, result of output from the accelerometer. And remember, the accelerometer is the thing that tells us you know, what direction our CPX is positioned in. So there's an X and Y axis, which goes left to right. There is, I'm sorry, there's an X axis that goes left to right. There's a Y that goes um, forward and backward. And then there's the Z axis, which is, is sort of the one that goes up to the sky or down into the ground. Now, before we get into this, um, in class, we also did an exercise with uh, uh, the cpx.light function. And what cpx.light does is it actually gives us the result that the CPX is receiving from its light sensor. So this little eye icon that you have on your CPX here, it's sort of blown up so you can take a look at it that I'm highlighting on screen, that is a light sensor. And that um, uh, will be a larger value when a bright light is shined on it. And it will be close to zero when there's no light at all, which is shining on it as well. So we can do a few things to just experiment with this, but the reason why I wanted to show you light uh, in, or why I showed you light in class, and I can show it to you again right now, is um, uh, if we want to plot what our light value is, the tuple is going to be expecting um, there to be a comma in the input at some uh, in, at some point. So uh, what we're going to do is if we had three numbers in here, which we'll have for our x, y, and z axis when we look at the accelerometer in just a bit, we got our commas, so that's totally cool. Um, but when we do light, we only get one value here. All we're doing is we're getting to see how bright is it? Is it really bright? This is gonna be a big number. If it's not, it's gonna be a small number. Um, but we have to put a comma afterward because the CPX is gonna be expecting um, this to be in a tuple. And if it's a single value, even though this sounds weird, just remember, hey, if I'm plotting a single value, I've gotta put a comma after it in the um, statement so it looks like a tuple. So with that said, let's hop over to our CPX and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, click on the serial monitor here. And in the serial monitor, if I do uh, Command C, uh, I stop and get into the REPL here. I'm going to do Command C just again. So here I am in my circuit playground. Um, my circuit playground was flashing. It stopped flashing. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight my first line here. Remember, each time we work in the, um, the REPL and we type, type statements in, we've got to go ahead and we've got to load in our CPX library first. So I just copied this from line, which is the very top of my code, and I paste it in. Now, again, what we have down here is we're just typing in code line by line and it's executing on our CPX. So if I go down in here and I want to go ahead and plot a value, even before I show you plotting the value, if you type in cpx.light and press enter here. So uh, I happen to have sort of darkness in my office now. I'm recording this at night and so I see a value of 11 on it. Um, but if I turn on a light and um, I make things bright, so let me just go ahead and grab a, a desk light for it and, and see if things get a little bit brighter. And now if I do this command again, remember when you're in a REPL, if you press the up arrow, it'll just show the last uh, command that it had. And if I press enter here, I can see, up. Oh, it's a little bit brighter now, it's 37. So if I want to go ahead and if I want to plot this particular value, that's where I do things with a tuple. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back over and I'm going to write some code that's going to plot in real time what my CPS is picking up. So again, this was right down in here. We were just writing line by line to get it to execute. But instead, why don't we do a for loop here, which will just continue to go through and maybe every half second we'll go ahead and sh uh, plot our light result. So let me show you how we would do this. Um, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna click on new and uh, then I'm gonna go back to my paint the rainbow, which I happen to have up here. I'm just gonna copy those first two lines because these are lines that I need in just about all the code that I write. And I click on back on untitled and I press uh, to paste command V and then I'm gonna say while, and then capital T for true, and then colon, and it starts to indent here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say print, and then I'm gonna open a parenthesis here, and then what it wants is a tuple. So I open another parenthesis here, and I'm gonna say cpx dot light, comma. So what this does is again, it gives me the reading from the light sensor on the CPX. The comma is just what I've gotta do when I wanna plot stuff out, because the plotter needs a tuple. Even though I've got only one value here, I've got nothing to put after it, I still need the comma. I know it looks really weird, but you know that's what you gotta do. And then you close it with a parenthesis that closes the tuple, and then you close it with a parenthesis that cr closes the print value. And if we wanna wait, let's say a half second in between here, if I say um, uh, time.sleep, 
and um, you know remember what we were typed in here it was uh, some variant of uh, of one second so if I do 0 0.5 that'll be half of a second in here and now what I want to do is I want to save this on my CPX so I double click on where it says untitled and let's see CPX or my circuit Pi is showing up here so I click on that I'm gonna save to it almost like it's a thumb drive that's how the circuit uh, uh, how, that's how my CPX behaves and if I say um, code.py and do a save here now uh, it says do I want to replace it yep I want to replace it so I'm gonna save over top of it and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the serial model here monitor here and this should show the output that I've got that's executing on my circuit Python and for some reason it's not so let me you know play around with this and show you you know again hey if this this is the problem that you run into we can fix this first I'm gonna get rid of paint the rainbow I'm gonna make sure where I got my code.py did I save it definitely on my circuit playground code.py yep I've saved it in there I'm gonna replace it click on my serial monitor here sometimes you have to do a uh, control D to show up and then there it goes it starts showing the output here so this is the standard value that I've got and you're not seeing this now but if I put my finger over top of that little um, uh, icon that I'd had before with the eye on it uh, what that does is it makes things really dark so that's why my number is getting really low and also if I move my um, uh, icon up close to light so you can see that, that the value gets much much larger there as well but we're not plotting yet but since we're printing out here this tuple value if we just click on plotter now all of a sudden we can see we are plotting a value here so you can experiment with this on your own if you put your finger over the little eyeball icon on your CPX you can see that um, the number is plotted closer to zero because you have no light coming in and then if you shine you know your phone on it or you hold your CPX up to a light you should be able to see that the value spikes up uh, rather dramatically and we can see the numbers over here on our serial line again it just shows you how we can use the serial monitor so that's pretty cool now let's go ahead and figure out how we can plot the values for the accelerometer so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop the execution that I have here too so if I just do control C that will stop execution I'm gonna get out of the serial monitor I'm gonna get out of the plotter um, and remember things weren't showing up before but if I just did a control D in the serial monitor it just started showing me the output from my executing code so again remember control D may show you the output if it's you're not seeing the output that you want in your serial monitor so now let's go over and, and um, work with the accelerometer so what we're gonna do here to change our code so that we're not looking at light and by the way if you want to keep this light value in here too one of the things that you can do is just do um, a hashtag just in front the number sign and then a space before print and that's a comma I mentioned this in class too so whenever you see that um, that just says hey don't execute anything on the line after this hashtag and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the acceleration value so there's three values so what we're gonna do is we're gonna essentially create three variables and we can do that by saying X Y and Z equals and what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab those three values from the CPX dot um, acceleration um, uh, line in here so if we type in C CPX dot acceleration this is a function here it's going to return three values for us an X value a Y value and a Z value and then once we've got our X Y and Y and Z value then what we can do is we can simply say print and then again we open parentheses once for the print statement and then we open it one more time for the tuple and we can say in here X comma Y comma Z so again I don't need the extra comma at the end because I've got more than one value here that I'm plotting and then I can close the parentheses with the tuple and I can close the parentheses with the print statement and this is gonna do it for every fifth of a second but you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it now instead uh, 0 0.1 for a tenth of a second and what I'm going to do here is uh, as I save this code I'm going to move my um, circuit playground express around so you can see uh, you know the results are going to change in real time on the screen thanks to um, plotting so here I go I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save and again this just saves code.py it should be saving directly down to my circuit playground express but just if you're worried about that you can just double click on it again type in code.py and replace what we've got there and then if I get into the serial monitor here you can see three values are showing up and uh, the default that you get is going to be pretty close if I hold uh, my CPX flat it's going to be close to zero for my x-axis zero for my y-axis and the Z is close to 10 which is just the value for one gravity pushing down um, but now if I go ahead and uh, I click on the plotter here I can see my value showing up so now what I'm gonna do with my CPX here 
is uh, I'm going to lift it up and uh, so I'm going to try to lift it horizontally but if I shift it tilting it sort of um, to the right here I can see um, you know I show a negative value or if I tilt it to the left here I see a positive value for the X if I tilt it forward I see a negative value for the Y if I tilt it backward I see a positive value for the Y and if I flip the thing totally over I see that my um, initial value which looked like it was more like um, uh, 10 uh, or close to 10 positive now it's close to 10 negative because I flipped it over and again I'm just gonna move it around a little bit and I can see how my plot values are changing as I move things around in real time and again Moo actually isn't the best IDE it's not the best um, you know programming environment for Python but it actually is the best one for the CPX because we get the serial monitor and the plotter which are directly linked to that so hopefully you see that hopefully that was pretty cool for you and just to remind you and encourage you so I had the URL um, uh, that I included in our um, course links on the first page of our Canvas page here, which can take you to the Circuit Playground Express API library. Or if you just type in Circuit Playground Express, Circuit Python API reference, you should come to this page here. And if you scroll through down here, and again, just you know, make sure that you're clicked on the Circuit Playground Express bit here. But if you scroll through down here, again, it says, um, uh, you know, all of the different things that you can access after typing in CPX. So if you do CPX.acceleration like we just did, this is exactly how we set up here and we showed our acceleration. Now this will print out the three values here, but when we put this in a tuple value, which surrounded it by another set of parentheses, that allowed us to give some serial output. So that's why ours looks just a little bit different from this, because we did some serial output. Then you can also, um, you know, read through some of these other ones. Uh, you know, do you want to detect to see if button A was pressed, button B was pressed, the light sensor we played with already the pixels are here as well and in fact you might see also that there are some additional commands in here like this says see neopixel dot neopixel and if you click on this um, you might see that there are some other things in here too for brightness which we dealt with in class as well um, so um, and you know we use the fill command uh, and um, and those kinds of things so again feel free to experiment with those kinds of things especially all the ones that you see on this main page down here you'll find lots of cool stuff like being able to tell if your circuit Python Express was shaked or shaken I should say um, so uh, hopefully um, you can see again where you can start to expand and fool around with things on your own and get your CPX to behave in the way that you want it to keep at it